Hello everyone, we are back and I am so excited to share this with you. This is the new sermon book. It has arrived by Advent Preaching. And the purpose of this is like a normal notebook, but specifically for sermons. So here you see I put Ephesians on it. I'm still trying to come up with the title for the series, which I'm thinking about I'm thinking about doing a series on faithfully walking in the will of God. And that's based on Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. But I'm going to, once I get all the sermons together, then I'll put it there. But the whole purpose of this book is up here, you could put your sermon series. Next, right down here, you could put the date. So I put June 2023. And the purpose of this book is when you're doing your devotions in the morning, even when you're doing the Sabbath school lesson, what you could do is you see the sermons that stick out to you. Like, oh, I would love to preach that. Then you start building upon it. So I'll show you what I've been working on today. And this one is the need of the Holy Spirit through personal relationship. And this is based on the background, the foundation. So to line up the foundation of the book of Ephesians, we looked at Acts 19. And in Acts 19, what it did was it spoke about how sorcery was happening in Ephesus and it had to be cast it out. It had to be, the books needed to be burned, those sorcery magic books. And what I did was I started to go off of the purpose. The purpose is to use the historical background of the city slash culture situation of Ephesus to give foundation of why Paul wrote the letter and point listeners to Jesus. So that's the foundation of the sermon. I put the date right here. You could put the date July 1st. Sermon title. First, I put the Lord Jesus Christ. It was just a working title. Now I put the need of the Holy Spirit through personal relationship. And I could even shorten that one. But the whole purpose of this book is to take the notes on the sermon and then be able to write it in there. Right here, I have the preaching text, Acts 19, 11 to 20. But then I put verses 16 and 18. These are my key verses. So when I'm preaching it, to start out with... I may read Acts 19, 11 to 20, but the actual verse that we're going to focus on will be verse 16. To show you a, a blank page, it looks like, see, I've been using this a lot lately. It looks like this. So you'll have your, your date, your sermon title, preaching text, notes at the side, introduction, how you're going to introduce a sermon, problem, how it connects to the great controversy, solution, how it What's the biblical solution and how does it connect to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus? Main point, key phrase that you repeat throughout the sermon. Application, how does it apply? Conclusion, what do you conclude from everything? Transitioning to the appeal. Appeal is the call for transformation in Jesus. On the back of the page, you see now the notes you can take the notes. So this book has 52 sermons in it. That's enough for one year. So if you want to write one sermon a week, it's good. Inside of the book, I've even been taking notes on the book of Ephesians for the background of the book. Even right around it. One of the themes, like I said, faithful surrender to the will of God. So that's one of the themes that I've been working with here. And then, yeah, so that is the sermon book. You can get one. They're available on Amazon.com. All you have to do is type in Advent Preaching Sermon Book. You can get a soft cover like this. Or if you want it to last longer, you can get a hard cover. So let's go to the sermon of today. The need of the Holy Spirit through personal relationship. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we ask that you guide us through the power of your Holy Spirit as we go over this sermon outline. I pray that you could bless us and give us strength and give us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if we read the scripture to get a context of what's going on, this is Acts 19 Verse 16, and you might ask, if this book is on Ephesians, why do you have a sermon on Acts? And the reason why I have a sermon on Acts is because you're showing what was happening in the time in Ephesus 
one of the largest cities in Asia Minor, and why Paul was writing the letter for Ephesians. So what we do is we look at the book of Acts as the foundation, and then it allows us to have the cultural context of what was going on, what were some of the challenges that they faced at the time. So you know now the background in preaching your series on Ephesians. So if you look at the verse 16, this is the action text. So when you're preaching a section, let's say you're preaching 11 to 20. This is a section. But what is one of the key texts in that section? And from the key, t key text, I found, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. And then that lines up to the second key text. Many of those who believe now came and openly confessed they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total number came to 50,000 coins. In the way of the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. So I chose verse 16 as the, the scripture to focus on. So that's the scripture you will read. Now, why would you read that scripture? Why wouldn't you just read the whole section? The reason why you read that scripture, first and foremost, is to grab the attention of the people. And that's when you transition to the introduction. The introduction now says, now in this world, we are dealing with a, a excitement and attraction to evil spirit sorcery. There's even a video out right now for a trailer of a movie and it has to do with a hand where they all come in a room like a Ouija board and they start chanting these demonic things and they grab onto this hand and when they grab onto the hand, the hand is supposed to be a demonic hand and it pulls you into the realms of evilness. And in the Bible, we see that sorcery did come up in the Bible. Demonic spirits did come up in the Bible. But when we play with demonic spirits, we are left naked and bleeding. Sorcery and deception is humiliating because it is a waste of time. I want to transition into the Bible in a time when idol, idol worship was very prevalent in the city of Ephesus. They worshiped this god Artem Artemis and also they did sorcery. And this is a problem because the devil was trying to use all these distractions to get us away from the will of God, from having that passion and zeal for God. And this is where when we see in the book of Ephesians where Paul is saying grace and peace to you all those who are in Christ Jesus. He's calling them back to that love relationship with their first love, with, with Jesus Christ when he died on the cross and the Pentecost went out in Acts. And in Acts, it was interesting because we see that the preaching of the gospel was going everywhere. So there was a zeal. People were excited. And then now we see in the city of Ephesus that the devil is trying to use sorcery. He's trying to use all these things to distract the people from the true God, from a relationship with Jesus Christ. We start here with all the miracles and the amazing things that God was doing in Acts 19. We see in Acts 11, Acts 19, 11, it says God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. So you see, this is shows how the Holy Spirit was working through Paul because he had a personal relation with Jesus Christ that God was doing extraordinary miracles through Paul. For example, Paul was surrendered now to Jesus Christ. And we see this connection where the miracles that God was doing to Paul, that even the handkerchiefs and the aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. When you go to preach this sermon, this is so powerful because 
it shows a connection to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus, when he was living and he was walking through a town, there was a lady who was bleeding for 12 years. And this is exactly the same story that when Jesus was going to heal Jairus' daughter, she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. And Jesus said to his disciples, you will do greater things than what you see me do. So Jesus, she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and one person was healed. The garment was on Jesus. It was the power through the faith that she had that it left, the power left him and was able to heal her. Now, Jesus is using the Paul where he is filled so much with the Holy Spirit. He is surrendered to God where the Holy Spirit is working through his life that even just a handkerchief that touched Paul and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. So here we see the great power of the divine power of God working through Paul. And then now we're going to see the contrast. Verse 13, some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva and Jewish, a Jewish chief priest were doing this. Now, this is where it comes to get interesting because we start to see the great controversy work, working. Then the man who had the evil spirits, right? It said, one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out the house naked and bleeding. So see, see what's happening here. We, we see that they're trying to use the name of Jesus without a personal relationship with him. They are blaspheming the name of God using it in vain with no authority. They have no authority to use Jesus' name. That's why they're saying, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, they're not saying that we have a personal relationship with God. They're not saying we're surrendered to God. They're not saying we've seen the power of the Holy Spirit work in our life. They're just saying, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. And this is where the problem happens because satanic powers, they, they yield only to the presence of God. They yield only to the presence of God. They stop only when divine power comes. You see, and this is where we see the great controversy working because in verse 11, you see God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. Now you see in verse 16, it's saying that then the man who had the evil spirits jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So here we see the contrast between the great controversy. We see in verse 11, we see the power of God working. We see in verse 16, evil, evil. And this is where we start to see the, the biblical story taking a turn. It said, When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. So here they see the difference. They see Paul and the miracles that God is doing through Paul's life. And when you are in a personal relationship with God, when you abide with Jesus, when you have the Holy Spirit working in your life, you see the power of God working. But then they looked at what happened with these men that tried to use God's name falsely where they did not believe in Jesus. They said, they who's in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they didn't believe in Jesus, but they're trying to use the name. And when you witness the difference in the power of God and the evil of the enemy, this is where we have a choice. Are we going to obey God and walk in the ways of righteousness and to surrender our lives to him? As our Lord and Savior, this is what happened next. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they have done. 
a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the, the scrolls, the total came to 50,000. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. So here we see the biblical solution. The people witnessed the great controversy and they realized their need for a savior, for a real personal relationship with Jesus. And it says that they repented and they turned to Jesus. And this is where Jesus says that if I am lifted up, if I am lifted up, I'll bring all men to myself. So when Jesus went to the cross and died, he, he sent the comforter after that. And he's given us the power of victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. But this is where we have to come to a realization in our life. That the power of the Holy Spirit comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So, so what is God calling us to do? God is calling us now to seek out a personal relationship with God. God is, God is calling us to seek out a personal relationship with God. And to do what they did. To repent. Confess our sins. In the name of Jesus. And then... What, what, call, what, what Christ is calling us to do is to experience the power of Christ today. So Jesus is calling us to seek our own per personal relationship with God. To repent and to confess our sins in the name of Jesus. And to experience the, the power of Christ today. To bring your scrolls. Bring your scrolls and to burn them, the things in our lives that are keeping us from a personal relationship with God. And when you, when you look at all these things, you have to ask yourselves, have you witnessed the evil of this world? Have you witnessed that there's the great controversy going on? On one end, where you see Christ and his redeeming love, he came because God so loved the world that he wanted to give us a, a, a chance to be able to look to the cross and to realize that the blood of Christ washes us clean from all sin and gives us everlasting life. That is the gospel. That's the good news of the gospel. The good news of the gospel is God is seeking to redeem us. Because why? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But through Jesus Christ, through the cross, God is looking to reconcile the world back to himself so that we could experience what? We could experience what Christ, what Christ is writing through Paul to the Ephesians. He's saying to them, to the church in Ephesus, he's saying, By the will of God, God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of the gospel. That's the purpose of why Jesus died for us, so that we could live in grace and peace. That we can know when it comes to our salvation that we are forgiven, that we are blessed. And this is where God is calling you today. God is calling you today to surrender it all to Jesus and to say, I repent of the evil in my life. I accept Jesus Christ's death on the cross and I want to live for him. Amen. I want to live for him. So this is what we saw in this foundational verse when it comes to the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians, and also the background that we find in Acts 19. And this is where Paul is saying that I am an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. It was, it was God who saved me. It was God who allowed the Holy Spirit to work through me and for me to have this personal relationship with Jesus. And this is where we appeal to you all. We appeal to the listener. Will you surrender it all to Jesus today? Will you say, I repent of the evil in my life. I accept Jesus Christ's death on the cross and I want to live for him. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us your word and giving us the opportunity to repent and to come into a reconciliation relationship with you, God, by looking to the cross and knowing that the blood of Jesus washed us clean. And Jesus now sends the Holy Spirit to live through us every day to walk in the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So that is how you use the sermon book to break down into seven parts, introduction, problem, solution, main point, application, conclusion, appeal, to preach a sermon that lines up your sermon series on the book of Ephesians, on the letter of Ephesians, and you can use the sermon title, The Need of the Holy Spirit Through Personal Relationship. Or you could change it, Holy Spirit in a Personal Relationship. Or you could say, burn your books, using Acts 19, 11 to 20 to show what was going on in Ephesus, which is the foundation behind the letter to the church in Ephesians while Paul was in Rome. God bless you all, and may God continue to preach Jesus through you. Blessings. Mm -hmm.